From the South, shares at this hour, an exclusive interview given by the Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro to the Lasurge journalist Luis Guillermo Garcia. He is going to offer statements in the context where, for example, the United Nations General Assembly are holding debates today regarding the global challenges of the world. Just a few minutes ago, the Foreign Minister of Venezuela offered his statements. Ivan Hill assured during his intervention how Venezuela is willing to support the the world in an ordered peace. Let's listen to the statements of President Nicolas Maduro during the interview. President, well, we saw it in the opening session of this fair. What is the meaning? Because Turkey is a particular country in the middle of two continents, Asia and Europe. The NATO also, but it's not uh, Muslim. It has sometimes positions that are in confrontation with the interests of the imperialist world and NATO. What is the meaning for Venezuela of this crisis? The world is facing a transition towards a new era that is born already. The era of a pluricentric world, pluripolar world, several poles, pluricentric and pluripolar, two concepts. Believer said 200 years ago, the balance of the universe, a balanced world where neocolonial or imperialist, imperialist um, colonies don't pretend to impose to other people. This world has powers and superpowers. We and Turkey are part of those emerging nations and we are in a transition towards uh, countries with strong economies, with its own educational, technological, scientific process, and with a new political independence that is growing in this world new groups are conforming so that this world has its expression in the dialogue between civilizations, the religious dialogue, the cultural dialogue, and a new and powerful economy has emerged. This world has as great superpowers China, Russia, India, it has as emerging powers countries like South Africa, the continent of Africa in general, countries like Brazil, Mexico, and Turkey is also one of these emerging powers. So we are building the new geopolitics of the world. We are part and our protagonist from long ago of the new geopolitics of the world. Modestly, we can say from Venezuela, land of, free, of freedom on uh, liberators. It was not a casualty that we have Francisco de Miranda, Jose de Sucre here, Simon Rodriguez, Andres Bello, Josefa Joaquina Sanchez, Luisa Cáceres Alice Mendez, that today is celebrating anniversary. Between among all of these, let's say, leaders and personalities of the highest level of the world, Venezuela is today a reference in the whole world in the political, moral, and spiritual field because we are in the middle of a great battle and Venezuela uh, holds the admiration of the whole world since we had fought and have won in spite of the harassment and siege, um, and also the fact of being a blocked and pursued country. I was saying this specifically in the installation of the Second International Fair to key Venezuela, uh, if in any place Venezuela is appreciated, if any people love the Venezuela, is to key its people. And as I was saying, it's a very important nation because it's Euro-Asiatic. 
Istanbul was important for all civilizations. You go to Istanbul and half of it is Europe. And they have borders with uh, Eastern Europe, Romania, and other countries, and have uh, assembled towards the Eastern is Asia, and you see the difference of culture and color. So it's a marvelous country, and I have proposed to the president that we not only are going to do and a fair per year, but two international fairs to Kiev, Venezuela, one after three months of each year, and the other one in the last quarter. And it has to be considered an economical, commercial, and technological fair of international character and to look for several levels of investment beyond our two countries. So I believe that from the first quarter 2025, a new stage of relations of econo economic relations between two countries is going to start. We are in the same path of building a new world, building peace for the world, and we love each other, which is something marvelous. We not only want to advance together because we have the same vision of the world, but also because we have better business opportunities for economic development between the, both countries. And we want to make progress together because we love each other. The love for, from Turkey for Venezuela is great. And the love that Venezuela's people have for Turkey also is great. Can you give us some details about that relation? How is the correlation of economic forces between Turkey and Venezuela, imports, exports, and potentials of both countries and relations? This year, we will achieve $800 million of trade exchange with real products produced by the immense economic apparatus of Turkey with a great quality and products of Venezuela and I have good news because in December we hope to reach 800 million dollars for 100 on their side and 400 on ours we import 400 and export 400 we are achieving balance in the tr in trade the golden dream of any economic relation between countries. And we are achieving it in 2024. So perspective of development and economic growth are amazing. We are at the doors of an economic uh, advance between both countries. Her coffee is um, last time we saw each other the X account was eliminated just because you were in my program. And Elon Musk attacked this Venezuelan journalist that has also be that was also a victim of other attacks. You he achieved it but we took revenge when we expelled X from Venezuela. That's Venezuelan or Turkish coffee. Venezuelan coffee is going to Turkey because they like the coffee there. The Ottoman Empire in Turkey was when Yemen coffee arrived. And they started to drink coffee at that time. Uh, where the Ottoman Empire was in power and it expanded to the whole Muslim uh, sphere. Speaking about Turkey, the president in the United Nations compared Benjamin Netanyahu with Hitler, a bold position which made me remember Chavez's position in 2006 when he said we need to 
re-found the United Nations. Because capacities of the United Nations are not enough to end with the problems of humanity. One of the guests, President of Colombia, Petro, was in favor of Venezuela and Cuba. He said that if DASA will vanish, humanity also will do it. He was speaking uh, before the United Nations lately. Are you recording with a camera? Thank you. President of the session, Ivan Hill, was Samuel Moncada. He was appointed in the United Nations. He is vice president of the General Assembly of the United Nations, and he preceded several sessions. What I was about to say is that something that is happening now happened 100 years ago, and it's a good fact that journalists like you who have great programs in Telesur analyze this. A hundred years ago, we had something called the Society of Nations. It was the United Nations at that time. The first attempt of humanity to try to fund an organization where all countries of the world would be represented. A hundred years ago, the world was very different, and the rise of fascism and Nazism and Frankism and the partnership of the whole colonialist Western and of the United States of America by then destroyed the experience and society of the United Nations. We need to remember this uh, for your own generations. There was an experience where a multilateral system based in international law die. And why? Because he was killed. It was killed by allies of fascism and Nazism. Same thing is happening today. The main debate that has marked this 79th session of the National Assembly of the United Nations was debate uh, against fascism and Nazism of Netanyahu and against Ukraine and la lack of capability of the United Nations to stop crimes against the peoples of the world. That's the main topic right now. What Erdogan president did of comparing Netanyahu with Hitler is very important historically, and it will be remembered in the future the opinions of this brave man like President Petro that denounced the massacre. And we have right, <coughs> uh, spoke to denounce the massacre, not only against the Palestinian people and the destruction of Gaza, the crime, the genocide, but also the crime that is being committed against the Arab peoples and the threats that face the Muslim and Arab peoples of that region, the threats against Russia and a war again of the of NATO against Russia and threats against the Bolivarian Venezuela, those mercenaries and murderers to who want to create a civil war in Venezuela. We are in a milestone moment or the United Nations acts or it will be a useless uh, agency and the responsibility would rely in the same powers, the United States and Europe, same elites that are allies of Netanyahu. Does the uh, Zionists have to know something to do with the fact that the United Nations don't encourage actions to reach peace? BRICS may have helped to change things. We have hope to change. We hope to change the world system and achieve 
the universe, the balance of the universe that Bolivar wanted. And I'm sure that we will have paths for humanity. Unlike 100 years ago, we have a powerful alternative today. 100 years ago, they used all of forces of monarchies, fascism, Nazism, Frankism in Spain. You must not forget that elites from London, Washington, and all of the countries of Europe started to support Hitler and Mussolini and the war uh, against the Second Republic of Spain and isolated the Soviet Union. Today, the world is different, I might say. First, humanity wants peace and it's interconnected. And humanity will be in charge with a powerful public opinion movement and powerful social movements also in the United States, Europe, and the world to stop this threat of extermination and war and fascism will be defeated. It won't have the impact it had before. We have stopped fascism here in Venezuela and defeated it in all of its expressions. And Venezuela is becoming a world reference of how to fight fascism, neo-Nazism, hatred, and projects of recanalization in peace with the law and constitution. Venezuela is an example of the fight against fascism, neo-fascism, similar expressions. And we are victorious and have received the support of the world in the United Nations. Two great topics have been treated. First, rejection towards Zionism, Netanyahu, fascism, Millet, and Mrs. Machado, and all of the allies of fascism and the crimes committed against the Muslim and Arab peoples, the Gaza's people, and Lebanon. Total rejection. In Venezuela, the people who support these crimes uh, are part of fascism. Mrs. Maria Corina Machado is the one who supports the crimes committed for uh, Malay and Netanyahu. That was the great topic, rejection towards genocide and fascism. Second topic, the support to Venezuela. We have got support to the Venezuelan people uh, in its fight against the blockade and fascism. I cannot finish this interview without asking you about a topic that is underway, which is the the complaint the, about a payment that government of Ivan Duque did with money from drug trafficking, $11 million they used to buy a virtual system to explore conversations, maybe yours or mine. And I understand that Ivan Cepeda, senator, is going to demand Duque due to this fact that is been proven and uh, it has been suggested that a summit must be celebrated between along among Venezuela, Mexico and Colombia due to um, the fact that they have spied in lead social leaders. It was bought to uh, Israeli company. It seems like everything is connected. Yes, we denounce um, at that time the cruel crimes committed by Ivan Duque uh, within Colombia with the social protest behind the murder of Young's so-called uh, first line in Cali, Medellin, Bogota. Ivan Duque was related to that. I know what I'm talking about because we know a lot of the things that happened in the, that place because people, uh, honorable people were there who were against his crimes. He was behind all these crimes. Then he bought this Pegasus system and we were warned about it because he had access to cell phones of important political, social, police, civilian leaders of Venezuela. And he was behind supporting at that time. 
Juan Guaidó to uh, achieve a coup d'etat in Venezuela, but they couldn't do it and won't be able to do it. But we were informed about how it was used to conspire and try to kill us. Ivan Duque was behind the plans to try to kill important political, social, uh, military leaders of the Venezuelan revolution, especially uh, persecution against me and obsession. He is a murderer, a criminal who lives with obsessions. At its time, I denounced it. It must be recorded somewhere in a cloud. I denounced at that time his participation in the murder of the president of Haiti. And at this time, they tried from Colombia, Vicky Davila, who participated and knew about all the information related to Pegasus and used it for his journalism work, which is not journalism, but psychological work, and was taking um, stuff from, proportionated by Ivan Duque from the illegal system Pegasus. At its time, I denounced it. When they had the opportunity, they tried to um, pretend that Venezuela was involved in this. Is the people that were the people that capture mercenaries, members of the Colombian police, and we captured them and. The truth was revealed a few hours ago. The mercenaries who killed the president of Haiti were from Colombia. And then was revealed that these same mercenaries carried out other operations in America, South America, and responded to the Palace of Mariño. Eva, an investigation was carried out by the prosecutor's office of Colombia. They would find the links between El Palacio de Mariño de Van Luque and the murder of President of Haiti, who had a conflict with uh, the interest of the Colombian drug trafficking, and he was ordered, um, he was um, murdered. We have been victims of those crimes, and today I have been a witness of the scandal uh, of Venezuela with this system Pegasus. Some of the things I've read are true, and we all wonder who owns this uh, system and what is it being used for. I know it's being used to overthrow President Petro and at the same time try to hurt Venezuela. And its implication with drug trafficking, who's behind this? Well, I've been denouncing it today. This scandal of Pegasus in Colombia coincides with the plan to murder or overthrow President Petro. It's financed by the same people who try to cause violence in Venezuela or uh, overthrow the revolutionary Venice, government of Venezuela. I denounced it, of course, he was always doing it. FBI, DEA, CIA, CIA has a headquarters in Bogota. And they look for mercenaries there. We have proofs about of this. And ask yourself, how could we survive this four years of Duque? Because we know how to defend ourselves, and there in Colombian institutions, there's a lot of people who love Venezuela and want peace for our country. Peace in Colombia and political stability in Colombia is also peace and stability uh, in Venezuela. So this scandal related to Pegasus 
it's very relevant and we will continue to denounce it because we want peace, respect for democracy and stability in Colombia. I'm very grateful for your interview. I don't know if you would like to share something with the world. A lot of things I would like to share, but it would be in the next edition of A Coffee with Luis Guillermo. Thank you very much, Mr. President. President of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moro, has given us this interview right when the second Expo Fair to Kiev, Venezuela has been inaugurated with great expectations for both nations. Thank you very much. We were listening to Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro, who offered an exclusive interview to Telesur's journalist Luis Guillermo Garcia. During the dialogue, President Nicolás Maduro highlighted the role of the emerging powers, countries like China, Mexico, Turkey, which are building the new geopolitics of the world. The president assured Venezuela is part of the creation of a new world order, and it is also an international reference for its moral struggle against the harassment and siege imposed by the United States and also its Western allies. In this sense, the Bolivarian leader also assured his nation is willing to keep building its economic ties with Turkey, an economic relation that this 2024, for example, will report 800 million U.S. dollars in trades. Regarding the ongoing United Nations General Assembly, the president highlighted that the main debate that has marked the 79th session is the condemnation against fascism of Israel and the urgent call for the end of genocide against the people of Palestine. At the end of the interview, the president reassured Venezuela's determination to safeguard its democracy and sovereignty in the face of any threat. This is all for the moment. Stay tuned with From the South.